thing that they were, they were, they, they were crying or weeping over, just imagine, was the laying of the foundation of the house of the Lord. This was supposed to be a good thing. Finally, they were able to get back to Jerusalem. They were able to enter or, or restart the work that was destroyed by the Babylonians. And so they were allowed to come out of exile to go back home to reestablish this work. And some felt good about it and some didn't. I believe quite much like how we may be feeling today. Some of us may be very happy to be able to get back to church, to the church building, and uh, to what we're accustomed to, and, and the joy of even the inkling of starting something again means something to us. Whereas there's some of us who are like, not so happy about this. And so we weep inside, we, we, we mourn inside, we complain inside because the way we see things is just completely different. But who were these people who were weeping? Who were these people? It was the older generation who was weeping loudly, while the younger generation was jubilant. Yeah? Why? Because the older generation was living in the past. Hello? They were reliving the good old days. These folks could remember the magnificence and glory of the temple. Back in Jerusalem, they wept because they remembered how much more beautiful it was than what they were about to pursue. The reconstructed temple. It would not, in their minds, carry the same glory carry the same magnificence, carry the same essence as what it carried before. And so some of them wept. And I'm sure some of us possess this morning, whether individually we are the joyous ones or we are the weepers, or maybe we are both joyous and weeping at the same time. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, some of us have mixed feelings about this whole thing, about the return from what we might call our exile. But hear me today. We will miss the latter glory of God's temple, you and I, if we live in the past. We will miss the latter glory of God's new work if we live in the past. The church may never be the same again after COVID-19. That's a fact. It may never be the same. But I, for one, personally don't think God expects the church to be the same either. You and I, we expect things to go back to normal. But I have this sneaky suspicion that God has another agenda. That God has something else in mind that is going to make some of us very uncomfortable, very displaced, and very disgruntled. Because of how God is going to shift our idea, our ideals, and our understanding of what we call church. And it's not going to be something that you're going to like. One service finished, and we are dashing to get to <laughs> service number two. Yeah. God be praised. I think things went well. Um, it's different, but again, it's about what, you know, God can do. Um, or what God will do, and that new thing that He will do in spite of the season that we are in. We have to look forward to what God will do. 
you know sometimes we get caught up with yesterday and um, the experiences we had yesterday that we do God a disservice by um, you know in, in respect to what it is that he wants to do in the future and so I want to encourage you look forward to whatever new thing God is doing as difficult as it may seem God is still in control let the people say amen church number two we're about to get doing that Service two is done. One weary preacher. No. Hungry, hungry. Yeah, and hungry. That was good. It was good. Um, the whole experience was good. I think there's a reason why uh, I'm doing this while I'm young. Because <laughs> I can't even begin to imagine this if I was much older. You know, so yeah.